Hello everybody. Here we go with the tarot cards now. We're moving our way to number two. Uh, <laughs> here. And then number three. And number four. And number five. And I have to show you these together because this is what I call the top high court. The emperor and the empress are the top king and queen. But it's unfair to show them without the two guiding lights beside them. Now, I'm just trying to position this so you can see. You see over here, this is the High Priestess, number two. And basically, when she comes up, oh, down board, when she comes up in a spread, she is saying to you to trust your intuition, go with your gut feelings, look behind the screen, follow what your insight is saying to you. And, you know, in modern times, the High Priestess, in court if you like, has formally been done away with, but she had just as much power as the Hierophant, i.e. the Pope, on this side over here, um, back in the days, you know, back in those medieval days. Every court, every High Court had a, an astrologer, a soothsayer, to prescribe whether or not the crops were going to be good or the Queen was going to bear a son. So they did have a lot of um, interaction with the high court. And this poor dear, of course, when the church was getting a bit uh, upset at the amount of uh, power or influence she had with the court, well, we all know what happened. The witch hunts and, you know, let's get rid of her. Let's get rid of this person who has a natural insight, a natural knowledge. But when she comes up in a spread, he or she it indicates, because of course the High Priestess isn't exactly female or male, it can represent either sex, the High Priestess says go with your gut intuition, go with your gut feeling, look behind the scenes. Uh, whoop, that's number two here. Yeah, right here. If it represents a person, it's someone who's born naturally clairvoyant. Just someone that you know can speak to spirit, someone who's just got a natural insight, natural instincts. So as an individual, they're very spiritual. Okay, now let's move over. Whoa. Let's move over to the Empress. If you can imagine back in the days when those old castles were cold and no central heating or anything, it was the Empress or the High Queen that would lay down the rules. You go put fires in those bedrooms, the smiths are coming over, go get a couple of pheasants, two geese, you know, and so when the smiths arrived, the castle was warm and welcoming, and it was all down to her. So when she comes up in a spread, it really does indicate domestic harmony, domestic comfort. If it represents a person, this one, is very female. You've even got the sign of the, the female here. This card says that this woman is like a Jewish grandmother. Come in, sit down, keep warm, are you hungry? Really warm, really giving, very kind. It can also mean that the woman in question, uh, when you're doing a reading, is very fertile. So, a good card to come up if you ask the question of, oops, am I going to fall pregnant, or oops, has my girlfriend fallen pregnant? That's the Empress. Now, we move over to the Emperor. Lovely guy, yeah. Look, he's quite relaxed, and he's the head of state, isn't he? He's got really no weapons in his hand, his legs are sort of splayed open, and, oh, he's just... He's just relaxing in his chair, and really, the card, the emperor, is very male, and it represents the highest sort of representation for a man in the deck. It is a man who is comfortable with himself, a man who doesn't have to prove anything to anyone. So as a person, it represents a very laid-back, powerful in their own way, someone who's got quite a deal of presence, but definitely a laid-back man who doesn't have to prove himself, who's actually got it quite together. But if it's just representing, um, you know, coming up in a spread and, it, and it's not representing a person, it can mean a large formed organization 
a PLC, um, school, government, hospitals, any large run organization, because obviously him being head of state or head of a country, he is the organization. So that's also what could mean in a spread. Now, if we come over to our fella here, let me just get him in a bit close because you know what? It says the Hierophant, but really it should be the Pope. These keys down here represent the keys of knowledge. And if any of you have ever seen the film The Name of the Rose with Sean Connery and Matthew Broderick, you'll know that the monks used to hold all the knowledge, the books, and used to have to ask them questions and then they'd write it down. They'd look in the books. You weren't allowed to handle the books. And even now, there are books in the Vatican that can really answer a lot of life's questions. A lot of the world's questions probably even have the answers to the pyramids in the Vatican, but we'll never see them. Only certain religious uh, scholars will. So when the Hierophant, or as we're going to call it, the Pope, comes up in a reading, it means anything seen in the eyes of the church. Um, it also means go and seek, as in, well, anything seen in the eyes of the church as in weddings, funerals, christenings, okay? It can also mean to go and seek professionally recognized advice. A solicitor, bank manager, financial advisor, a, you know, a specialist. They will have the keys of knowledge, the recognized keys of knowledge. So it can be an advisory card. If it comes up to represent a person, it's someone who's very square. Someone who like is like uh, my accountant. He's really excellent and informed in one particular area, but the rest of it's kind of square. You know, he's a, mm, what can I tell you? He's a nice guy, but if you get him on his given subject, he or she would be fascinating because they have the keys of knowledge. But other than that, they're a bit boring, you know, a bit sort of controlled. Anyhow, I hope that's helped. You guys can post questions, by the way, for me on our YouTube site, which is WOTAB777. Hope you have a good day. Ah, <laughs> and uh, spring's in the air. Anyhow, love you. Bye.